What is value? There are great security systems to protect all the values of the world. There are millions of dollars spent every year on security systems to protect people's tangible items from theft. The item being protected does not determine its value. It doesn't submit a report say I am this important I'm worth this amount society determines what its value is but God is different God places a value on us based on what he said is good in the creation he created mankind he created male and female he blessed both of them and in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 and God saw everything that he made and behold it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day so the value that's truly of worth is the value that God places on us not the value the world places on us we are of great value and God has provided one of the most profound security systems that the world has ever seen. When we are in our darkest hours, often we don't see any value within ourselves. We don't see the fact that maybe God loves us. We don't see the fact that God is with us because when we are hurting or going through something, we don't always see our value, but that's when we need to see it the most. We need to know how God values us so that in those trials and dark times, we can find the strength and the resolve to know that God will never leave us, that he is always with us. The value of God far transcends anything of the world because the world would look at you and your situation and see no value in you at all because of maybe the situation you're in so what I want to focus on is us seeing the value in ourselves that gives us the strength to rise above the stuff that others see is of no worth at all you know the darkness is profound sometimes in our lives but a light in the darkness of our lives can reveal our true value it's one thing to be valuable because of things that society says is of worth because of our jobs because of our family because of our various connections or whatever but in the sight of God these things have no value if they're contrary to his will when we're dark and hurt that's when God needs to be the closest. And he works through people. This particular verse in Genesis about Joseph. After Miss Potiphar had told that lie about him. And Mr. Potiphar had Joseph cast into the prison. It says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So God is the one who will cause others to see his value in us so that we will find ourselves even in a crazy situation like Joseph in prison he rose above what the world said was his value which was just a slave to now become an assistant to the keeper of the prison this may sound like a small thing but it was a great thing and it was God's way of letting Joseph know that he was with him even when he had been lied on misrepresented and ended up unjustly in prison how would we handle that how would that affect our view of God and what we think his value is of us? The greatest gift to mankind is the cross of Calvary, which protects me from my life. That sounds like a crazy uh, thought, but it is the cross of Calvary that saves us from our lives, that gives us the value that heaven sees not the value we create or society puts on us or our situations put on us when we are overcoming maybe an addiction or a hurt or a disappointment or an abuse it is that cross of calvary knowing that the son of the living god gave his life for us that we could have a right to the tree of life that we could have a right to all the blessings of heaven he made such the ultimate sacrifice which puts a value on us beyond 
words beyond even human understanding to know that we who are wretched, we who are responsible because of our sins for Christ going to the cross. As we behold the wonder of God to love us so much, it puts a value on us. The only true value we have is is the value that is revealed in our relationship to the cross. God is the God of mercy. He lets us live our lives and go on little trips. And I use this little map to kind of explain what we do. Life is like a journey, like a vacation. We go places. We have positive experiences. We have some places that maybe not be so positive. But we constantly on a journey to a desired destination. This little map has a treasure on it. And the treasure we are always chasing is something in our lives, some accomplishment. But all along the way to the final accomplishment, there are little stops along the way. Little contacts with other people. Little experiences that reveal who we are in the eyes of God. But each one of these little points represents a decision. Because at any place in here, we can stop our journey. We can change our destination. We can reroute what we're doing. The journey that we're on has to, is our choice. And it has to be something weighed in the view of the cross it is not a thing that we do as children of God to pick our destination we all have one that's heaven so it's about us making that decision to make the journey there all of our paths may be a little different our experiences may be a little different but the destination is the same but there are rules to get there. We cannot tell the plane that I want to skip and go directly from one to three. No, that doesn't work like that. So as God is determining for us the path our life would be, we still have free will to choose to follow the path God has set for us. God has set it one, two, three, four, five, six. We could decide to set it one, four, five, three, two, one. Uh, whatever we double back cross back or however but God gives us the choice to make in this life will you keep your destination as heaven or will you decide that some point on this journey is adequate God lets us choose what we do and what value we place on ourselves and I, I love this scripture in Deuteronomy it says I call heaven and earth this is Moses talking and he says to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. And, and it goes on to say that thou may cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob to give them and this is what we have been offered the heavenly Canaan will we continue to choose and the scripture is profound because it lets you know that God allows us to choose the blessing or the curse and, and Moses encouraged the children of Israel to choose life by being obedient to God, by cleaving to him. He is the true value estimator. He is the one who places the true value on who we are. But do we accept that value? Life is a constant struggle against all the little traps and tricks the devil has prepared for us as we try to make our way home. I love this little... <laughs> <laughs> this little graphic here with this poor thing caught in the middle. And you notice the little traps are not all going off at the same time. they kind of going off at different times. That's how the devil comes to us. He attacks us and makes us vulnerable by bringing all these little tricks and traps into our lives. Like we are just unable to make it. But we do have an advocate. As frightening as this thing may be, there is always a way out with God. Our lives sometimes can be so crazy if we just trust in God. In spite of what we see, there is always a solution. But jumping into one of these traps is not the option, as the little graphic shows. He's standing and waiting on an 
opportunity to escape or someone to come and rescue him so trying to jump into one of these traps or run around the traps is not the option it is for us to trust that God knows our value and that in him we have power and wisdom to know what to do when we are surrounded when everything seems crazy you know and this scripture in Corinthians says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's what it takes because what we value in ourselves is the power that God gives us to understand that he is more than able. The weapons of our warfare are not man-made. They come from the very arsenal of heaven. We need not worry because the beloved commander is in charge. You know, I love this scripture in 2 Kings chapter 6. And this is when Elisha was surrounded and uh, the king of Syria was trying to kill him off because he was wondering why every time he planned something, the, the, the Israelites knew he was coming. And so one of his soldiers told him, well, there's a prophet in Israel who his God tells you what you're thinking in your bedroom. And if you go to 2 Kings chapter 6, and they, the, verse 15 says, Elijah and the servant had woke up and they in this little town. And his servant comes to him. He's all fearful and everything. And he tells Elijah that the city is completely surrounded by the armies of the Assyrians with chariots and everything. But verse 17 is what we must remember. And it says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Talking about his servant. Elijah is praying that his servants can see what Elijah already knows is there. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was filled of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So the power of heaven is above any human thing that can come at us or any warfare from the enemy of souls we have to believe that and we must be just like this little character in this graphic we must wait even though it's a frightening situation sometimes as what this servant was going through now we know that God is more than able because the value he places on us is more than anything the world can begin to comprehend it is not what we see it is the value that God places on us finds value in this way the regard that something is held to deserve that's a key point things of value are held to deserve that value as defined by those who see its worth now that's not circular reasoning as I said at the beginning items of value the item does not place the value on itself from a worldly perspective the world determines what it's worth you know like for artwork they determine the artists and, and the people who are in the art world. But it's the critics and the connoisseurs and other people who are willing to pay for an item. So as people are willing to pay more for an item, the value increases because of what people see is worth to be. And that's what God wants us to understand. That the world has an idea of value on things that are tangible, that they consider valuable that create wealth and they decide that it deserves that value well you have to understand that god desires you to understand that you deserve the value he places on you now some things you find in synonyms that were in the dictionary you see advantage hmm, value provides advantage it provides value provides helpfulness or merit or good so value is very much a part of what God has ordained us to be. He ordained that we should feel the necessariness of being helpful. To be feel we have worth. Or to feel the advantage of being saved. Now the second definition they got I thought was really interesting. A person's principles or standards of behavior. One's judgment of what is important in life. And the example they give here in the, in the dictionary online, they internalize their parents' rules and values. That's true in the spiritual realm as well. The values we place in our family that God has given us 
oftentimes like myself I didn't come from an environment where the values were in the will of God in my home that's not what I was instructed in but I still had values that were not according to the will of God that the ethics and the moral code I had was totally contrary to the will of God so the values work both ways the things that we find and are told that are worth important things that bring about change that's what we are told because we use these codes these moral conducts and behaviors to survive so that's what we are taught to do to use those same instruction and I find this interesting society's values are passed on to us as children and that is so true whether those values are good or bad we find ourselves with them whether we want them or not so God intervenes in all of that and overturns the negative things we may have been exposed to and gives us right values. In the concept of value as an action word, this is the part society loves. It loves to put a monetary value on things. And that's interesting because the verb context of value does that. It's just appraising, putting a price on something like your estate is worth 45000 or $345,000. That's what society does. It puts a monetary value on things based on their evaluation of it. The continuation on the verb part is the part I really like because it talks about the importance of the benefit of the value and the price that's put on it you know I like this example from the dictionary it says she had come to value her privacy and independence it becomes a personal thing when it turns into a verb you know thinking highly of highly esteem you know put stock in and it becomes I like the last one it becomes a treasure it's valuing it's, it's something that's active and she valued her, his opinion, his or her, you know, my thing is that. Cherished, treasured, and I like the last one down here on the bottom. It says important. And that's what we have to know, that God finds us in an action environment. He prizes us. We are his treasures. We are important to him. And it gives the example of this is my most valued piece of crystal. We are God's most valued possession. With all of that in mind, we are so unique that God has placed in us such individuality in our DNA as a creation of God. It is profound. There's no one like you or me in the world. God has fixed it so that you are his most prized possession. The value that the world puts on things, and the higher the value is because the item is so unique. That's what makes it valuable. You know, it's like the Mona Lisa. There's not but one. So the value of the Mona Lisa, and it's irreplaceable. And that's how God feels about us. In our darkest hour, God still sees us as his most valued possession. But do we see ourselves in that light that will give us the confidence and the courage to face our situations? Knowing that God is with us, knowing that we of great value to him. It's not what we see at that moment in time it is who God sees and I like this explanation here uh, that I found about the DNA fingerprint and and I'm gonna read this it said DNA fingerprint is a piece of DNA so distinct that it can prove a person's identity these distinct areas can take on many different forms but each form is unique to any one individual the probability that two people receive exactly the same number of repeated sequences from their two parents is one in several hundred trillion. That's a lot of zeros. So be assured of your value. It's not based in a world where things are transitory that can be destroyed. Your value can never be destroyed. If the Mona Lisa is destroyed, it can never be replaced. Don't care how much it's worth. If the item is gone, the value is gone. But with us, our value rests in God. 
not what we see in ourselves but it is the value god places on us and he wants us to see the value he places on us not what society does so we should look beyond that darkness and the foolishness of the world to think because maybe i don't have this or i don't have that or i'm not married or i am married and unhappy or whatever your circumstances are that's not how god sees you god looks on the heart what is your character is the value that God puts on us. And that's what it's all about. I have taken this part. And I've taken the noun. And the definition. And it says the regard that something is held to deserve. The importance, worth, or usefulness of something. How does God see us in this context? What do we deserve? God sees us of great value. He sees such value and usefulness of us. That he has numbered the very hair on our head. It's not like he knows we have 9,000 hairs. As I was listening to a pastor preach one time. He said God knows when hair number 700 falls out. Or when hair number 25 falls out. Or when hair number 35 turns gray. Our value with him is so much. That he knows the very hair on our head. And he knows when we lose them. Or when they turn gray. He cares that much for us. He has that intimate love for us. So why should we worry? You know what profit it shall a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul that's what god longs for us that's how much he wants us to understand our true value so we will not trade the true value for the fake in this world this is the definition that we discussed earlier that involves a person's principles and standards of behavior what one judges is important in life your ethics your code the Bible says, when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it will be sin in thee. That when we give our word to God, we must keep it. That's part of our moral code and principles that God wants to instill in us. That's the value he wants to give us. And what's so wonderful in Deuteronomy, the Lord tells us that we're not held accountable for the moral degradation of our fathers. And they're not held to us who are wrong to be punished. God is just. Every man, as the scripture says, shall be put to death for his own sins. That's the value God puts on us. And so he sets a standard of judgment that we can live up to. And I like what Ruth did when Naomi and her, after they had buried Ruth's husband. And uh, Naomi gave Ruth the opportunity to return back to her home. But Ruth had seen something in Naomi that had changed her, her principles, her moral, her standards, to the point that Ruth would not leave her. And that's what God wants us to see, that kind of value in us, that he will not leave us. But he gives us the opportunity to see the beautiful value he has his principles his moral behavior his standards that we can live up to that when turn when we are with other people they will see those same values that god has shown in us to emulate to those around us we all love money and the value we have, as I said, about the verb part. This is the part the world really loves. They love to put a monetary value on things to determine its worth. But God doesn't look at us like that. God's value is more profound than anything. But we can trade our value for a few coins. That's what Judas did. Judas made a deal with the priest to betray the son of the living God and how much did he get 30 pieces of silver he didn't realize what he was doing and what it would cost him he sold the son of God who was given his life that he could be saved that's what you got to remember Christ died for Judas on the cross as well as Peter but their recovery was much different. Their outcome through their sin was much different. The value they placed on Christ determined their outcome. And I love this in Revelation where it says, 
I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou may be rich, white raiment that thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eyes with eyes of that thou may see. You know, gold tried in the fire, that character, the white raiment of Christ's righteousness, you know, the eyes of the Holy Spirit, so you can see the sin in your own life, so you can value the gift that has been given to you, that you will seek the transformation of character. I picked this slide with these hearts on it for this portion and we're nearing the end of this video coming to a close. The greatest value we have is weighed in the cross of Calvary. The fact that the son of the living God, the treasure of heaven, gave his life. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. That's what we have to understand. The gift is a gift of love. But the gift comes at a cost to us. All he asks is our obedience. We don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to take a long journey or a pilgrimage. All you have to do is allow God's great love. And his value for you to transform your life. Through the power of the cross of Calvary. This part, we think about the benefit, the high opinion. Consider someone or something to be important or beneficial. Have a high opinion of. And the last part I found, the, my favorite word in the synonyms, is treasure. The Son of God went a little further, fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. He gave his life that we could have a right to the tree of life. But he didn't have to. He asked, but he yielded at the same time. What value does he place on us? We are a cherished treasure of heaven. Let us honor our king and our sovereign with acknowledging the value we have in the eyes of God. Not as the world puts on us but in the light of the cross of Calvary Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost the king of heaven died that we could have a right to the tree of life he has placed a value on us beyond words as I said at the beginning you have been given the greatest security system that the world has ever seen the Son of the living God stands at the great throne, and he gives us his protection. He dispatches the great legions of angels to comfort us and help us see our true value. The greatest value we have shines in our darkest hour because the sun shines his love and his mercy and his grace on us through the cross of Calvary. Let us not doubt or waver in our tears and our fears to know that the protection is there, that is profound through the raising of such great joy and hope in our hearts to reach out to heaven, knowing that one day all of this will be gone and we shall stand before our Father's throne with joy and adoration, because truly our value would lead us there. The king has promised he will wipe every tear away from every eye. No more death, no more sorrow. All of this stuff will pass away. And we shall find that we are value to the king. That we have value to the throne. That the heavenly host loves us and longs for us to come home to be where they are. Let us honor our beloved king's great sacrifice. That we will see the value that truly resides within our hearts. Let the spirit of the living God be with you. And thank you so much for listening to this video.